In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate counter strain for the thoracic spine, specifically for the anterior thoracic tender points. As I go through this demonstration, I'm going to be touching a few different areas from right at the bottom of your neck here in the front of your chest, along the middle of your chest, and then right underneath your rib cage, um, and then on basically both sides of your abdomen, working way down to your belly button, below your belly button, to the front of your pelvis, and then also on the side of your uh, pelvis. I might also ask you for help in finding uh, your belly button and your pubic bone, which is that bone right in front of your bladder. And I'll let you know when we get there. If you're uncomfortable or if anything is tender, if you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, please let me know. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So we're going to begin by finding our tender points. We're going to start with AT1. And AT1 is going to be at the midline, at the episternal notch, right at the superiormost part of the sternum and then push uh, inferior and then we can uh, ask if there's any tenderness. Any tenderness there? No. And then from there we can move to AT2 which is going to be at the angle of Louis. So we can move below along the manubrium and then find where the manubrium meets the body of the sternum and then we can push right there at the midline and see if there's any tenderness. Is there any tenderness? No. And now AT3 through 6 is at the midline and lines up with the costal attachments to the sternum. So the best way to find where those are likely to be is to start from the angle of Louis, move lateral and find rib two, and then move inferior and find ribs three, four, five, and six where they attach, and where three, four, five, and six attach at the midline is where we're expecting to find those points. So AT3 would be right here in the midline. Is that tender at all? And then AT4 right here in the midline. Is that tender at all? Then AT5 here in the midline. And then AT6, which is above the xiphoid. Now for AT7, AT7 has three different points associated with it. The first one is going to be immediately sub-xiphoid, so we're going to find the bottom of the rib cage, bottom of the sternum, and basically uh, tuck immediately under that xiphoid and press posteriorly. Is there any tenderness there? No. And then the other two points for AT7 are going to be one quarter of the way between the xiphoid and the umbilicus. So we're going to ask our patient to help us find uh, their belly button. Perfect, so a quarter of the way from uh, the xiphoid to the umbilicus, if we broke it up into um, four parts, so here's one quarter, here's a half, and then here's three quarters, we're expecting to find the two bilateral points for AT7, uh, one quarter of the way and then lateral to the midline. So this would be AT7 on both sides. And then half of the way between the xiphoid and the umbilicus, we can find AT8, and then Three quarters of the way from the xiphoid to the umbilicus, we can find AT9 bilaterally, uh, lateral to the midline. And then for AT10, we're going to be looking one quarter of the way between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis. So we're going to ask our patient to help us find the pubic symphysis. Go ahead and find that bone right in front of your bladder. Perfect. And here's your belly button, and here's that bone. And I'm going to go about a quarter of the way down. and. Uh, lateral from the midline bilaterally, and here's where I'm expecting to find AT10. Any tenderness there? I'm going to move now halfway between that umbilicus and pubic symphysis uh, to find AT11. Any tenderness there? And then from there, I'm going to move, uh, instead of moving inferiorly uh, to find AT12, AT12 is actually on the anterior aspect of the iliac crest at the mid-axillary line. So from where I'm finding uh, AT11, I can let my hands rest on the iliac crest and then find the point where the iliac crest meets that mid-axillary line. And then I can uh, try to find the point where I can push posteriorly directly onto that bone and a little bit medial uh, into where the muscles attach there. And is there any tenderness on either side there? Yes. So now we're going to review treatment of the different points, and uh, several of the points are going to be broken up into different regions, which are going to be treated similarly. So starting with AT1 and AT2, those are going to be treated primarily with pure flexion of the head and neck. So we're going to find AT1. Again, we would first assess for tenderness. We would establish our tenderness scale. Once we've established our tenderness scale, we're going to assume the expected treatment position. So we're going to cradle the head and neck 
And in this case, we're going to make sure that we cradle not only the head, but also the rest of the cervical spine. And I like to put my index finger down by uh, T1 so that I can sufficiently feel how much flexion is approaching that area. And then I'm going to now stand up to flex the head and neck. And once I start to feel some tissue texture change at AT1, then I would try to compare to my original 10. Reposition as needed with a little additional flexion. Uh, and then once I've achieved a sufficient treatment position, I'd hold it for 90 seconds. And then I would return back to a neutral position very slowly and passively, never lifting my contact with my finger on that tender point. And then I would reassess for tenderness. For AT2, it would be very similar. So I'd be at the angle of Louis. And uh, the only difference would be that I would engage a little bit more flexion until I feel a tissue texture change at that point. For AT3, 4, 5, and 6, I'm also going to engage with pure flexion, but I'm going to need a little bit more of it. So to assist me in uh, gaining that extra bit of flexion, I have a couple different options of how I can include it. One, I can uh, try to bring my hand further down the upper thoracic spine to help, with, help me with lifting. Um, I can also have my patient move up towards the head of the table, and then I can use my abdomen to support their heads to uh, add a little bit additional flexion. And an additional method is I can use my knee and tuck it under their upper thoracic spine and lower cervical spine uh, to help me with that additional flexion. So now I'll demonstrate the position for uh, AT5. So I would first establish my tenderness scale, and then I'm going to try to engage in a little bit of flexion. Now in this case, if it's very difficult for you to do this completely passively, your patient can help you uh, in this initial phase by lifting their head and neck. Go ahead and lift your head and neck a little bit. And then you can lift your knee, slide it on the table, and tuck it under their upper thoracic spine. And then you can rest your head. And then you can still use your other hand to assist with additional flexion as needed. And you can uh, lean in under that upper thoracic spine as needed to add additional flexion. Once you find your treatment position, you'd hold that for 90 seconds. So you should make sure that your table height is reasonable so that you can maintain this position for a full 90 seconds. And then once that 90 seconds is completed, you're gonna slowly and passively return our patient back to a neutral position. You may need to warn them that you're going to move um, so that they don't automatically try to hold themselves up. So go ahead and relax. I'm gonna do all the work in putting you down, okay? And then you can slowly remove your leg and then slowly and passively return your patient back to a neutral position. And then without lifting your finger off the tender point, you then reassess for tenderness. So now moving down to AT7, 8, and 9, we're going to have our patient uh, in a seated position. So go ahead and sit up and face away from me. So now for AT7, we have our three points, one at the midline and two that are lateral to the midline, about a quarter of the way from the the xiphoid to the umbilicus. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be treating the right side. And as part of this setup, we're also going to be uh, anticipating that we're going to be putting our foot on the table uh, opposite the side that we're going to be treating. So I'm going to first find my tender point. So I'm going to be uh, reaching around this side here. And first, I'm going to find the xiphoid, then move a little inferior and lateral to where I would expect to find my tender point. I'm going to establish my tenderness scale, and then I'm going to put my foot up on the table on the side opposite the tender point. And then I'm going to have my patient rest their arm on my thigh. And here, the expected treatment position is flexion, side bending towards, and rotation away. And I'm going to accomplish that by having my patient rest back into me, slump back into me. That accomplishes a little bit of flexion. I can accentuate that by using the head, using the upper thoracic spine, using the shoulders to help guide that flexion. And then I can side bend by shifting my hips and leg to the left, which is going to cause a relative side bending to the right. And then I can rotate away from the tender point, so rotate to the left, by turning my hips and leg to the left. And all the while, I'm feeling that tender point relax under my fingers. Once I've achieved my treatment position, I can compare to that original tenderness scale. If I need to, I can further adjust by additional flexion, so have my patient just slump back more and use the head for additional flexion.
flexion or the upper thoracic spine for additional flexion. And then I can shift my position a little bit more to the left to induce more side bending to the right and then turn over to the left to rotate away from the tender point. And once I've achieved a sufficient treatment position, then I would hold that position for 90 seconds. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that my table height is reasonable so that I can maintain that position for a prolonged period. And then after a full 90 seconds, then I would slowly and passively return my patient back to a neutral position and then have them sit up straight. And then without lifting my finger off the point, I would then reassess that tender point. And I would use that same treatment position for uh, AT7 through nine. For AT7 at the midline, I can just choose a direction to side bend uh, towards and rotate away from. And if that does not decrease the tenderness, then I would just choose the opposite direction. Now for AT10 through AT12, we're gonna have our patient in a supine position. So go ahead and lie back with your head over there. Good. And again, we're gonna be uh, using our foot on the table to help to position their lower extremities now to help us to uh, relieve tension on those tender points. So first we're gonna start with uh, AT11. So again, uh, finding uh, our patient's umbilicus here, and then uh, we're gonna have them find their uh, pubic symphysis. So halfway in between lateral to the midline is where we'd expect to find AT11. And we're gonna demonstrate treatment of the left AT11. So now to treat this, we're also going to be flexing, side bending towards, and rotating away. But how we're gonna accomplish that is a little bit different. In this case, we're going to be taking our patient's legs and we're just gonna lift this left leg first, lift it onto our thigh. Then we can take this right leg, lift it onto our thigh. And now here, what we're gonna do is we're first gonna flex by bringing the knees towards the head. That helps to flex the uh, thoracic spine. We can side bend towards, so side bend to the left by bringing the feet towards us here and then we can rotate the thoracic spine away from that point. So rotate the thoracic spine to the right by pulling the patient's knees towards the left, which causes a relative rotation of the torso to the right. So we engage in flexion, side bending towards and rotation away until we feel some tissue texture change and then we can compare to the original uh, tenderness scale we can fine tune as needed with additional flexion, side bending, and rotation. And then once we've achieved a sufficient position, we can hold it for 90 seconds. And after that 90 seconds is done, then we can slowly and passively return our patient back to a neutral position. So we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna scoop under the knees. We're gonna slowly shift our weight so that we can lift our leg and remove it and slowly drop our patient's legs down to the table. And without lifting our finger off that point, we can press it posteriorly and compare uh, to our original tenderness scale to reassess. Now for AT12, we're gonna be using a similar uh, treatment position, but our uh, tender point contact is a little bit different. So again, finding our iliac crest and then finding the mid axillary line, we're going to find that iliac crest in the anterior aspect of it and push uh, posterior, a little inferior, and a little bit medial to engage that tender point. So if I was going to treat this left side, again, I would put my foot on the table and lift my patient's legs up. In an instance where I am unable to lift my patient's legs up, I can at this point have my patient lift their legs up. So go ahead and lift this leg up and they can help me get into their position. So lift this right leg up. They can help me initially position their legs that way. Once their legs are up here, I'm gonna ask them to be completely relaxed and stay passive the rest of the time. So just stay completely relaxed as I continue to position you. So now for AT12, we're gonna expect that we're gonna require a little bit of extra flexion, which is gonna to help to uh, change the tension uh, at that iliac crest. And then we're also gonna engage in side bending towards, which is gonna lift that iliac crest up towards the bottom of the rib cage and decrease the tension of the muscles on that side and then we're going to rotate the torso away by pulling the knees towards us so again market flexion side bending towards and rotation away 
and after we've achieved a sufficient treatment position, we can hold that for 90 seconds, and then after that 90 seconds, we're gonna slowly and passively return our patient back to a neutral position, slowly shifting our position and our weight, tucking our arm under their legs, and then slowly returning their legs down to the table. And then without lifting our finger off the point, we would then press in order to reassess.